my favorite tool. If you do not have one, I recommend you go out and get one as soon as you can. This is a pressure and vacuum test by Mighty Vac. You do not need the Mighty Vac brand, but it is excellent because you can take all the parts and they can all be replaced if something breaks. This is so useful, whether it be a two stroke or a four stroke, of course, two stroke pressure and vacuum of the crankcase. You can test oil seals, you can test your carburetors, of course, with the four strokes too. You can test whether the needles are seating, you can test fuel lines, impulse lines, the list is endless and it can save you so much time and frustration chasing your tail. I, I can't, honestly, I can't recommend it enough. I use the Mighty Vac 8500. Go and get yourself one. Just invest the money. If you're interested in repairing small engines, you can't really do without. It's going to save you a lot of time. The second one, an impact driver, not necessarily a wrench. The driver takes a quarter inch hex. The wrench takes a socket or what I'd consider a square end drive. It doesn't have to be a Milwaukee. I chose these because I like the color of Milwaukee. But uh, in fact, actually, I'd suggest buying a cheap one from your hardware store. Yes, it's going to be a bit heavier. It might not be quite as smooth running. It doesn't matter. The before I had this one, I had exactly that and it did everything I needed to and more. It was only when I went to the drag strip and I saw them using Milwaukee and I thought, you know, that looks really nice. It looks really compact and I love red. So I'm going to Go and get myself a set. Actually, I, yeah, I'm not, not convinced there, really. I don't think they're, as, they're, they're great, but I don't think you really need to spend the money. The next one, my goodness. This is Weira's T-Handle 416R. I use this all the time on small engine repairs. The thing that I love so much about this is it gives you that feedback from the nut and bolt that I can't quite get the same way from ratchets, especially on light torque hardware. Because your hand's in line and you haven't got the leverage of, say, a ratchet, you can really feel exactly what's going on and you've just got great, you've got great feedback. And what's so delightful is I can really quickly, I've got these, I've featured these before, these um, Torx bits and Allen heads, they're long, they're 150 mil, they go straight in, you can tighten it, it just feels so nice. The feedback I get from a T-handle, um, I don't think really can be beaten. So that's it. Weira, T-handle. 416R. Moving on. Klein multimeter. Again, like the Milwaukee, I spent a fair bit of money on it. This is an auto ranging feature that means if I set it to resistance, I don't have to set a parameter for this to tell me the resistance. I don't have to set it to a certain 10,000 to 20,000 uh, ohms of resistance, for example. It does it all for me. So useful for testing coils, for testing ground, for testing capacitors, all those things that you might run into when you're repairing small engines. It's a super useful tool. It's, it's daunting. If you don't know or you haven't used one before, it's understandably daunting. But I've got so many videos on using these, on testing coils, on testing capacitors, testing ground, testing your HT leads, testing for resistance and switches. I've got all the videos. You can check them out. And uh, it's really going to help you on your diagnostic uh, journey for small engine repair. The next one, a spark tester. Now, I have spent too much money on spark testers in the past. I have another one here. Here it is. I actually recommend this spark tester and I've used it for a couple of weeks now, three weeks, maybe two weeks, two, three weeks, and I've used it probably about 30 or, well, yeah, about 30 times actually, maybe a bit more, I've been messing around with it. What I love so much about this spark tester is that you can clip it on and you can forget about it, pull your engine over and it will tell you and it will flash and it will stay flashing whether you've got low, okay, or high spark. Now I've got values for each one of those lights to tell me what uh, voltage they are. But the reason this is so nice is you clip it onto the engine, you pull it over, you can go back round to the front of the engine and you can see exactly what you've got. The reason why I don't like these ones that load the coil up and, and have to jump a gap is you just can't see it most of the time. It's a nightmare. Don't think that just by laying the plug on top of the cylinder and pulling it over and seeing spark there is a good way to test spark. It's not a good way to test spark. That's another one of those misconceptions that people do. It will tell you if you've got a spark, but when you put the spark under compression, it's so much harder for that spark to jump that gap. How many up to? One, two, three, four, five. Actually, I want to put two together on this. Here, I will put two together. I'm just going to do it. They're different tools, but they're going to go together because it's my video and I can do what I like. A compression tester. I'm going to talk about this because lots of people get tripped up on these. Compression tester and a leak down tester. Okay, we'll go over one individually or each one individually. Compression tester. 
the most important thing when you're buying a compression tester is to ensure that the spark plug adapter, the one that goes into the cylinder head, has a Schrader valve in the end of it. If you haven't got that Schrader valve in there, you screw it onto the cylinder head, this tube acts as part of your cylinder head. So you're hugely decreasing the amount of compression that, uh, that, you're, that you should actually be reading. So check, always check. Doesn't have to be expensive. Don't spend a lot of money on it. You don't need a snap on or anything or blue point, anything like that. Just make sure it's got the Schrader valve in it. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be more than accurate enough. Leak down tester. Now you can just pump air into a four stroke engine and see where it's coming out, whether it's the valves past the, the rings and coming out of the uh, crankcase ventilation system. But actually having one, and I made this because I bought three and they were all junk. Having one that can tell you how much it's leaking is so useful because all engines leak. But having that quantifiable number to be able to say, well, it's leaking, but it's still within a acceptable tolerance. Well, that's incredibly important. And of course, from there on afterwards, is it leaking out the intake? Is it out the exhaust valve? Is it leaking out of the PCV valve? Um, those sorts of things, that's obviously very important too. Having both just gives you a little bit more information as to the health and condition of your engine. They are my five, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, we're putting those together. Of my favorite tools, the ones that I recommend, but here are three that actually I think are probably a little bit overrated. First one, this is gonna probably irritate some people, I suppose, a torque wrench. I actually think that I've done more damage going to torque specifications than I have doing anything I, uh, by hand with a ratchet or a T-handle. And that is because, two things. One, you can't feel with so much leverage how that, that nut, that bolt, that screw, especially light torque specifications, is actually responding with those threads. What can happen over time, every time we take bolts in and out and weaken those threads essentially is that that torque spec can then no longer reach to where it should be. I just think uh, me and James Condon aren't going to agree on this because James loves his torque wrenches but they're just I think they're overrated for small engines. Snug, tight, a little bit of Loctite is going to get you a lot further than having to torque every nut and bolt up and find that more often than not they're no longer the torque spec that the manual recommends or the manufacturer recommends because they've wallowed out. These aren't new pieces of equipment generally that we're working on. So overrated, get yourself one, but I think you'll probably use it less than what you think you will. Measuring equipment. You do not need any real measuring equipment for small engines. More often than not, they're very forgiving. The clearances are very forgiving. I bought some expensive Mitutoyo measuring equipment because I'm geeky and it makes me feel good. Like I enjoy that. I don't think that you need it by any stretch of the imagination. If the compression is low, put some new rings in it. Check the ring end gap with a feeler gauge. Piston water, uh, sorry, piston water, cylinder wall to piston skirt clearances. Don't worry about measuring them all separately with telescopic gauges or dial bore gauges. Don't, unless you want to, I enjoy that sort of thing. I'm kind of, as I said, I'm geeky. Just use a feeler gauge. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. And if you hear a little bit of piston slap, chuck a new piston in there. You don't have to get too obsessive with it. I do, I like it. But uh, it's probably my advice is actually don't worry about those sorts of things. Don't be tempted, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. The last one. I've got sockets here, but it's just as applicable to spanners as well. Expensive sockets and spanners, you don't need them. And in fact, I reckon that the cheaper the socket or the spanner, the better it is when compared to good homeowner equipment. And the reason why I say that is good homeowner equipment more often than not comes with a lifetime warranty. And with that lifetime warranty means that they've added a bit of extra steel around say the socket or around the spanner because they don't want it breaking. They don't want to have to replace it. And that restricts where you can get the socket in, where you can get that spanner in. And it can be so frustrating. And actually I found my favorite spanners especially to be they were a dollar each and they they're outside they're out in the shed at the moment and i have no complaints over them whatsoever they're so thin they're so slim and the manufacturer on those sorts of pieces of or that tooling they don't want to give you any more steel than they need to and this is small engine repairs the torque specs are so low anyway you're not going to break anything and if you do you replace it it's so cheap 
the lifetime warranty stuff my opinion I, I wouldn't bother with it i would buy cheaper or if you really want something spend a really decent amount of money and get a high quality tool where the steel is really good and they don't and the heat treats good and they don't need to add extra steel to give it that strength so there it is there are my seven is it five six, eight tools five that i think are really useful that i love three that i think yeah possibly a bit overrated i think the good thing about knowing about those is when you're first starting out, especially, it's very easy to think, oh, I need this, I need this, I need this. And in certain circumstances, having that is great. Other times, you can get away with a cheaper alternative or not really needing it that much. I mean, yeah, torque wrench is handy, especially when you're just starting out and you want to get a feel for torque. But actually, I think very quickly you will soon find yourself rarely using the torque wrench and you can get by just fine hope you enjoyed the video guys i hope it gave you something to think about and uh, i guess the takeaway with this is actually you don't need to spend a lot of money on tools in fact oftentimes you can get away with the cheaper stuff and the cheapest stuff sometimes can be just fine so there we go hope you enjoyed the video guys i'll catch you on the next one